It can't be true, Kateri Fogelman remembers thinking on the day her husband showed her the surveillance footage of the bank robber who'd been terrorizing the area for months. Both Kateri and her husband recognized the robber. Kateri had been raised in a law enforcement family, and she believed in law and order. She knew she had to do the right thing and turn in the culprit, but it wasn't that simple. Her own father was the snowbird bandit, the cop that robbed banks. After screaming into a towel so her kids wouldn't hear her and falling to her knees in shock, Kateri pulled herself together and she, her husband, and her mother headed to the local sheriff's station to turn in her father, Randy Adair, a retired LAPD detective, for bank robbery. Although she knew it was the right thing to do, Kateri couldn't help but feel overwhelmed, so much so that she fainted outside the station before going in to make her statement. The robber, who had hit five banks between March and July of 2015 and made away with nearly $10,000, had been dubbed the Snowbird Bandit by law enforcement because of his age and white hair. But no one had suspected that the Snowbird Bandit was a former cop. Hours after Kateri made her statement, agents from the Orange County Bank Robbery Apprehension Team tracked down Adair's Jeep in the parking lot near the Rancho Santa Margarita City Hall and arrested him on suspicion of robbery. When officers showed Adair, age 70, a photo of the surveillance footage that had outed him, his response was, I'm cooked, I think I should have a lawyer. His family, the community, and the police were all stunned. How could a former cop, a family man, and a community leader be the snowbird bandit, the cop that robbed banks? Randolph Bruce Adair was born in 1944 and grew up as the son of a rodeo-riding dairy farmer in Artesia. While growing up on a dairy farm taught Adair the value of hard work, his family also claims that growing up with a violent, alcoholic father was hard on young Randy. Adair was drafted into the U.S. Army in 1965 during the Vietnam War and he was assigned to the Criminal Investigation Command in Panama. After returning from the war, Adair graduated top in his class from the LAPD Police Academy and began his career as an LAPD cop. Less than a year after graduating from the Police Academy on June 4, 1968, the 23-year-old rookie found himself responding to a call claiming shots fired at the nearby Ambassador Hotel. Adair vividly remembers being one of the first on the scene of the assassination of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. As he told the reporter during an interview he gave from prison in 2017, we got into the pantry and you could see that Kennedy was down on the floor. He's lying face up and I saw fluid, you know, from the head injury. Brain matter looks kind of like snot, you know? Adair was involved in the arrest of the suspect Sirhan Sirhan and even escorted Kennedy's wife Ethel to the hospital. 1968 was a memorable year for Adair for another reason. It was the year that he met his future wife, Susan Hackworth. She lived in the apartment next door to Adair and after finally convincing her to go out with him, the pair became an item and wed in September of that year. The couple would go on to have two children. A son named Andrew was born in 1971 and their daughter Kateri was born in 1975. After a strong start, Adair's law enforcement career took off. He was quickly promoted to detective and assigned to an elite unit focused on organized crime. One of the main jobs of this unit was catching bank robbers, which was a huge problem in the 60s. Adair's first bank robbery call came in on March 24, 1969. A silent alarm had been triggered at the United California Bank in Mid-City, and Adair and his team arrived just as the robber was attempting to make off with his stash. Upon seeing the cops, the robber ran back into the building and officers found him hiding in a second-floor bathroom. After arresting Robert Lee White, officers learned that they had captured the Wilshire Bandit, who had not only hit nine banks in the area, but was also wanted as the Blue Blazer Bandit in Fort Worth, Texas. In 1971, Adair was the first on the scene of a fire at a low-income housing development. With no sign of the fire department and smoke quickly filling the building, Adair didn't think twice before he ran inside and began getting the residents out to safety carrying those who were too sick or too intoxicated to get out themselves. Adair went back into the building at least seven times to rescue 25 to 30 people that night and was awarded a Class A commendation for bravery for his heroic efforts. As his reputation grew and the arrests piled up, Adair was promoted to homicide detective, where he spent the rest of his career working on well-known cases like the capture of William George Bonin, also known as the Freeway Strangler, who had raped, tortured, and killed more than 20 young boys. He was also involved in the takedown of Richard Ramirez, the notorious Night Stalker serial killer, who raped and killed at least 13 people in 1984 and 85. Adair retired from the police force in 1988 at the age of 53 and focused his attention on his family and community. The devoted family man loved playing with his grandchildren, deep-sea fishing, and volunteering with local youth. 
He had been a founding member of the LAPD Centurions football team back in 1979 and had helped the team raise more than half a million dollars for the Children's Center of Los Angeles. He also volunteered as a high school football coach and linesman at Dana Hills High School, and when some of the boys on the team got themselves into some trouble with the law, Adair even went to court on their behalf. But for all of his bravery and devotion, Randy Adair had a dark side. Adair had always had a complicated relationship with alcohol. He began drinking heavily after he was drafted to the army, and even in the hard-drinking cop culture of the 60s and 70s, he was known as an especially heavy drinker. He joined AA in 1973 and got sober for the first time before his daughter Kateri was born. But between the strain of the horrific homicides he had witnessed over his career and the medical bills piling up from his wife Susan's cancer treatment and his own health issues, sobriety proved elusive for Adair. He'd started drinking again in 1983, and things quickly got out of control. At his lowest point, he was living in an abandoned car near the harbor and didn't care if he lived or died. His wife Susan recalls one time when he phoned her and told her this was goodbye. He was holding a loaded gun and saying, I'm ending it because I can't handle it anymore. Things are too horrible. Thankfully, Susan was able to talk him down, and Adair got sober again in 1996, which saved their marriage. But by then, his drinking and declining health had made it impossible for him to work as a private investigator, and he and Susan had lost their home to medical bills. They declared bankruptcy in 2000 and were living on the fixed income from his $2,800 monthly LAPD pension. They were having trouble making ends meet, even with help and loans from their daughter Kateri. And this is when his gambling addiction flared up. Although drinking had always been his biggest problem, gambling had haunted Adair for years. He had been a regular at the local Indian casinos and the horse track, but soon he started playing online games on his iPad at home, and the losses mounted in the months leading up to the robberies. Adair had been forced to take out loans and withdraw funds from his pension after gambling away the rent money. It was then that Adair, a distinguished ex-cop, decided to turn to a life of crime. On March 20, 2015, Adair walked into the California Bank & Trust in Dana Point at 1.45 on a Friday afternoon, wearing a baseball cap with his revolver tucked into his waistband. Adair handed a note to the teller demanding money. Moments later, Adair walked away with a little more than $1,700. Adair laid low for two months before more gambling losses prompted him to attempt another robbery on May 22. This time, he targeted a First Citizens Bank branch near his home in Rancho Santa Margarita, taking off with nearly $1,200. On June 11, the day after his daughter Kateri's 40th birthday, the Snowbird Bandit struck again and this time making off with $944 from a Wells Fargo bank in Mission Viejo. On July 6, he made his biggest score yet, taking $3,600 from a U.S. bank branch in Ladera Ranch. Adair promised himself that this would be his last robbery, but by mid-July he was short on cash again and worried about making rent. On July 21st, Adair returned to the same First Citizens branch in Rancho Santa Margarita that he had robbed in May, this time making off with $1,600. Adair, who lived just a few blocks away and didn't wear a disguise, was clearly caught on camera this time, and the photo of the Snowbird Bandit that was released to the public the next day was what led to his downfall. Over a period of just five months, from March to July 2015, Adair perpetrated five robberies and stole just over $9,000 in total before he was turned in by his family. The morning after his final robbery, as his wife and daughter were giving their statement to the police, Adair was at the racetrack hoping to increase his latest take on the horse races. Unfortunately, luck was not on his side that day. Adair had lost more than $1,000 before he headed to the City Hall parking lot where his wife, at the urging of the police, had asked him to pick her up. 70-year-old Adair was arrested without incident, and police found a loaded 38 revolver in his briefcase next to more than $1,000 worth of betting slips. He was charged with robbery, for which he could face up to 20 years in federal prison, and held on $200,000 bail until his trial. Although Kateri knows she did the right thing by turning in her father, she insists that she didn't believe he was in his right mind at the time of the crimes. Adair's health had suffered ever since that fire back in 1971. Smoke inhalation had led to recurring bouts of pneumonia and bronchitis, and in 2010, Adair had suffered an aneurysm that required a nine-hour heart surgery to repair. He later developed sepsis from an infection stemming from that surgery and spent three months in intensive care. He was given last rites at least once during this time. In 2013, Adair had six heart attacks and was suffering from kidney failure that required dialysis four times a week. 
Kateri says his doctors called him a walking dead man and that they suspected that he had suffered severe brain damage. Kateri herself had noticed over the last few years that her father's mind seemed to be going, and she feels strongly that this contributed to his out-of-character decision to commit the robberies. In court, Adair pled guilty to one count of bank robbery and one count of brandishing a weapon for the May 22nd robbery in Rancho Santa Margarita. As part of his plea deal, another six charges stemming from the other four robberies were dropped. In the end, the judge took his age, health, and past public service into account when he sentenced Randy Adair to seven years in prison for the robberies. Adair was taken to the Federal Correctional Institution at Terminal Island, a low-security federal prison in California, to begin serving his sentence. Because he had used a gun in some of his robberies, Adair is considered a violent offender, but inside prison his status as a retired cop makes him an outcast. At his sentencing, Adair told the judge, I seem to have ruined my life. I'm ashamed I hurt people, innocent people, and I'm prepared to take the consequences for it. So what do you think about the story of the Snowbird Bandit, the cop that robbed banks? What surprised you the most about this tale? Be sure and let us know in the comments.